Sir, is that a power drill? This? Yes. Why did you bring a power drill to the doctor's office? Because obviously I'm an alpha male. You never know when you might need to drill something. Duh. Sir, did you just rip your sleeves off? Oh, yeah. No, I, I just came back from the gym trying to build some big muscles, you know. Had to cool off. Probably has tiny calves. Sorry. What, what, what was that? Oh, nothing. Sir, why are you here today? Well, you see, my doctor, my wife, thought that I should uh, pay BioStore for a visit. You know, make sure this old V8 is running all, on all eight cylinders still. <laughs> Sir, it is not uncommon for someone your age to have low T levels. Whoa, whoa. I, I, I don't have low T. Have you seen these muscles? Come on. Sir, we heard you blasting Michelle Branch when you pulled up in your car. All right, guys, what's going on? We're back today. As promised, I'm going to get my blood work done today. Uh, I will be asking the doctor some questions about my diet, my health, my exercise. And then after that, we're going to get my testosterone levels checked. And I will be reporting back to you guys all of my results. Here we go. Two sixty-seven point eight. We've gotten bigger. <laughs> How have I gained weight? Oh man! Hopefully it's muscle. Is this is like a cardio test. Yeah. Okay. All right. F e l o p z d. Uh, D e f p o t e c. L E F G D F C T G T. I guess the BMI has always kind of thrown me off because it's like I'm heavy because I lift it's, weights. Yeah, um, which is, kind of which is totally, off. totally, you know, a reasonable caveat to have. It is about the fat content, especially the visceral fat. Yeah. And so one thing that we worry about with higher BMIs is the cardio respiratory health or cardiac health, actually, you know, lean and muscular is totally healthy. I mean, that's a very healthy way to be. What's the weekly amount that you exercise? Five to six days a week, at least an hour. You know, we recommend yeah. at least 150 okay. uh, minutes per week and of uh, something moderate to vigorous activity. So diet, how you eat uh, on a typical day, it says one serving of fruits and vegetables. So usually you will actually have a benefit from having up to 10, increasing benefit of eating fruits and vegetables up to 10 servings per day. Okay. After that, it doesn't really matter, 10, 11, 15, whatever you want to do. You want to increase your good cholesterol, which you're doing a lot with exercise and healthy fats. Right. And you want to decrease your bad cholesterol. The good cholesterol acts like a garbage truck and goes around and picks up all the bad cholesterol from kind of your vessels and your fat cells and brings it back to the liver and tries to get rid of it and... They say that the healthiest thing is to have 20 different kinds of foods a day, try to eat the rainbow, different colors, like natural and unprocessed yeah. whole foods, whole grains Just as much as they Little thing. ingredient foods. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Just got done my annual physical. Big thank you again to Dr. Garg and Nurse Marion. They were awesome. Totally cool with letting me film. So thank you very much. Uh, if you guys are in Connecticut, please go check out Dr. Garg from Lifestyle and Family Medicine. Um, I will put the card up on the screen. A reference but had a lot of great advice for me a lot of good health and uh, dietary advice so i highly recommend good day we're gonna go get my testosterone levels checked now i will catch you guys there all right so i thought it would be best just to pull up my actual lab results here now this is from my health exam this is not from the testosterone clinic i'm going to come back to that here in a minute and i'll take you guys through that live 
Uh, but the first thing they measure is BMI, is the body mass index. That's the first thing they, they measure when I got in there. Again, is the ratio between weight and height. That can be used as a, what's it say, indicator for risk uh, for conditions, including cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, osteoarthritis, and stroke. Um, optimally, I should have been at 24.9 or below. Now, one of the th one of the things I don't like about BMI is that you could be my height, six foot five. I could be 260 pounds that I more or less am right now. And let's just say I was shredded. I had no, no body fat on my body whatsoever, but just because I am heavy for my height, they would have told me I was at risk or obese. Um, you know, those of you that have been watching since the first dad bod to dad God video, um, <clears throat> you know, I don't think I look obese. Um, I'm certainly probably 30% body fat. I have a lot of fat to lose, but by no means would I look at myself and think I'm unhealthy. So we'll take that with a grain of salt. But BMI was at risk or obese at 32.1. Uh, my blood pressure apparently was at, at risk, uh, 128 over 70. That, in my opinion, is mostly diet. Um, again, I think as part of my diet cleaning up that I'm doing right now, as part of this 12-week series of my mine that I'm putting myself through, I do believe my blood pressure will come down. I don't have any, I'll say, genetic um, you know, pre-existing conditions for high blood pressure. So I wasn't like on the high end, um, and I was actually, I think, right around kind of normal levels, but because I was slightly over on the top number here at 128, where I think they like to see you at 120 right here. Um, I think again, that's why it's staying at risk. But again, we'll uh, hopefully bring that down here throughout throughout this journey. Waist circumference. All right, so forty one. That's that's bigger than I thought I was. Um, you know, I want to get down to about a, a healthy thirty six, like a comfortable thirty six. So I'll take that when um, I am a little bit thicker around the midsection that I that I want to be. All right, lab results. So total cholesterol. Um, I'm within the, the range desirable here, so one eighty nine. Uh, milligrams per deciliter. Now, I think I could bring that down even more. Um, I do think the diet I'm eating right now with the oatmeal, which is, you know, it's good to bring down cholesterol with oatmeal or oatmeal is one of the foods that can bring down cholesterol. You know, I'm, I'm happy with this. It's in the range, but I think I can bring that down even more. Uh, my, my bad cholesterol similarly is acceptable. So nothing to be concerned about there. My good cholesterol is within range. So, okay, I'll take that for what it's worth. Uh, my triglycerides were normal and uh, hemoglobin A1C was within, within range. So nothing on here really concerning. My cholesterol is good or it's acceptable, which is good to hear, good to see. Blood pressure, I think we can bring that down. And BMI, you know, again, I, I kind of call BS on that, but hey, you know, we'll, uh, we'll bring that down. It's just inherently as I lose weight here and, um, you know, throughout this journey, I'm gonna bring that BMI down. So thought it'd be easier to share this on screen. Um, let's go back and I'll take you guys through my testosterone, testosterone results next. All right. I got my testosterone results back and they're not what I thought they were going to be. I'm not going to lie to you. I thought that I would have high testosterone, at least for my age. Um, I will be 38 in April. I know I'm saying I'm 38. I'll be 38 in April. And I've been lifting weights for the most part for 20 years. Now, look, I'm chubbier than I want to be right now. I definitely have some fat that's not healthy on my body that I should lose. That's what we're trying to do over the next 12 weeks. Um, but given the amount of muscle and the strength that I've been able to kind of hold on to, for the most part, right, for the last 20 years, I really thought I was going to have at least okay testosterone. It turns out my testosterone for my age bracket uh, in the ranges for my age 46 to 224, um, I don't know what measurement scale that is, but 46 being the low end and 224 being the high end, I'm at a 54.3 um, free testosterone. So the free testosterone is what kind of what really matters. That's what your body utilizes to kind of metabolize protein and grow muscle, maintain muscle, things like that. So a bit surprised to, uh, to see that there are some factors that led to that here. So I'm going to change the camera angle here in one second. I'm going to take you guys through my entire lab results here, my blood results. And again, these are separate results that's, that look at different things than my full physical health exam looked at. So um, don't confuse the two. My full physical health exam was for things like cholesterol. This is really the testosterone clinic was really for what is my what are what are my T levels? What are my free tests? My white and, and red blood cells, et cetera. So let me take you through that, and then I uh, will come back and I'll kind of talk about my plans here to hopefully naturally raise my testosterone and uh, see if I where I can get in the next twelve weeks. All right. So without further ado, let me take you through all of my blood work here. So. You will see here that my the first thing is my white blood cell count. So I'm a 
that's within the range of 3.8 to 10.8. So everything you'll see here, you'll notice everything is in range. Okay, so that's a good factor. Red blood cell count, 4.6. That's in the range of you know 48. Hemoglobin, 13.9. That's in range. Uh, the hematocrit, hematocrite. Not really sure how to say that, but uh, this is not an English class. I did not do well in English in high school. Um, that's 39.9. That's within range. Um, again, my MCV, MCH, MCHC, RDW, my platelet count, my MPV, um, everything you'll see here is within range. So that was a positive factor. Uh, there was nothing, you know, and get, again, inherent in my blood results that was, you know, an indication that I had anything kind of bad going on. Now, page two is where the fun is. So one thing you'll notice here is that actually my total testosterone is the 567 here, okay? So 567 on a scale from 250 to 827, I believe that's nanograms per deciliter. So I'm actually okay. I'm in like the middle, maybe slightly above the middle range of total testosterone. So that's a good factor. That's a good starting factor. Um, albumin is 4.8. So I was actually within the range for that, which is good. My real issue is this. It's my SHBG, my sex hormone binding globulin. You'll see that on a scale from 10 to 50, I'm a 49. The higher that is, the worse it is for your free testosterone. So the fact that that is 49, and I'll come back to that, my free testosterone, which again, the doctor kind of took me through was what really I'll say matters for those of you that just want the blood answer. Your free test is what really matters. I'm at a 54.3 of a range of 46 to 224. Um, now, again, I was surprised to see that because really your free test is kind of your body's. What the doctor was telling me is it's your body's ability to take protein, synthesize protein, you know, grow, maintain muscle, carry muscle. And look, you know, I, I've been able, when I push myself and I'm consistent and I, and I eat healthy, I've been able to grow muscle throughout the years. Now, there could have been a number of factors that led to my free test being lower that day. It could be that I've started dieting. Diet can bring down uh, total and free testosterone. It could be, you know, just I'm getting older. It could be just be natural. It could be that I didn't test early in the morning. You're supposed to test early in the morning when apparently your testosterone levels are the highest. Because I went to my health exam in the morning, I actually didn't get my testosterone checked until early afternoon. So again, the doctor did say that could have been a factor on here, but. You know, and again, guys, we're going to go back and I'm going to test all this again at the end of week 12, but then you'll see my bioavailable testosterone is 118.9, which again is incredibly low on the scale here. So, you know, I'm not pleased with my testosterone levels. I'm not jumping to, hey, I need TRT, um, though I think I probably could have gotten on TRT right away um, because they were kind of trying to sell me on it. But there's a number of, I'll say, health items that you should all be aware of. And I recognize I'm not reaching out to like millions of people right now. But for those of you that are watching and think, hey, I'm 28, I'm 30, I'm 24 in some cases, can't wait to get on TRT. Guys, like I know that like there's people out there and I'm not going to mention any names because some of them I follow, but there are people out there talking about how like TRT, it helps your libido, you're going to feel younger, you're going to have more energy. That is all true. But the truth be told, there's not a lot of long-term research that's been done on longevity. And what I mean by longevity is, you know, are you going to die five years younger than you otherwise would have because you're pumping your body full of testosterone into your 50s and 60s, maybe beyond? Once you start TRT, you have a very limited window to get off TRT um, because you are going to have like testy atrophy, right? Like for lack of a better explanation, your balls do shrink. And this is all from the doctor, right? And if you don't stop TRT in a number of months, like I think she said two to three months, there's kind of no going back. Your body stops producing its own testosterone when you're on TRT. So just things to be aware of. I'm not saying that like we all want to live to be 100 and if you die at 95, it's not, you know, it's not a bad thing. But um, I think everybody should go into TRT knowing the, the full picture here, which is there's a lot of immediate next 10, 20, maybe 30 years benefits from what we do know. But full story is we don't know from a longevity standpoint what this does to you. Like most men in their late 60s and, and later probably have almost no testosterone, right? So just things to be aware of, guys. I'm just telling you that because it's things that are going through my mind as I contemplate, do I get on TRT in my late 30s here or do I wait or do I not go on it at all? Like if I continue to get stronger and look better, 
maybe I just keep doing what I'm doing naturally and see how things work out. So um, I'll be right back. I want to put the camera back on the stand because my shoulders getting tired. But those are my lab results. All right, guys. So there you have it. I've got low T. Um, and, you know, is it embarrassing? No, not really. Um, I have not seen an impact in my personal life from apparently having low testosterone. Um, I feel healthy still. I'm able to lose weight when I want to. When I, when I apply myself, I'm able to you know, get stronger and grow muscle when I apply myself. Uh, my libido is, is fine. So um, I'm not embarrassed by it, but I do think it's important that I put this out there because I want you guys to know I am being honest. Like you're not seeing a fake version of me. I've been asked here in recent weeks because this video is coming out really kind of six weeks into my program. I'm very behind on putting out content, but this was, uh, this was from, if you can't see it, February, hopefully this comes in, but February 10th. So this was, you know, week one, kind of almost towards day one of me starting my program. So this is legitimately uh, my day one results. So I've had people come up to me and say, hey, are you natty just because I'm a bigger guy? And again, guys, I've been lifting weights for 20 years. And the answer is, yes, I'm natty. Um, you know, and I don't consider TRT natty. I mean, I see people all the time that are commenting on my things like, oh, I warm up with 275 on bench. Well, yeah, man, you're like 50 and you're on like a ton of TRT. I can tell. So don't let fake natties fool you. TRT is not natty. Whether or not I go on the TRT at some point this year, I don't know yet. I want to see how I feel and how I look at the end of this whole thing. And again, I'm going to be honest with you guys. If I decide to go on it, I will. Now, again, I will have a video coming up soon on really, there's like five natural ways you can increase testosterone. Um, there's one, I'll say unnatural way. It's Clomid. It's a pill you can take. And Clomid brings down your SHBG, your sex hormone binding globulin, which will then, then inherently increase your free testosterone. So I could take a prescription pill with very low side effects. And what Clomid does, it, it basically forces your pituitary glands to pump out testosterone. And in some cases, it can just shock your system. So let's say I'm a 38-year-old male, and I just need that shock to my, my pituitary gland to get my T levels right again. I, can, I, might, I may be able to cycle off Clomid, and for the next, I don't know, year, several years, my testosterone levels may go back to what they were in my late 20s, early 30s. Um, you just, there's no way of knowing that, but Clomid is one way you can bring up your free test by bringing down your sex hormone binding globulin. So, um, again, do I do that next? I don't know, but you guys have our results. Hopefully you got something out of this video. If you have questions, comment below. If you want another video with me going through all of this stuff in like technical scientific detail, I'm happy to, to research it and put it out there for you. But again, use me as your base. If you're around my age, I'm 37, I'll be 38, you know, in April, um, you know, you can look at me, you've seen my videos with my shirt off. If you follow me on social media, you'll see my kind of weekly progression here. Again, when I'm shooting this right now, I'm actually done weeks. I'm today is actually the end of week six, but again, these results were as of day one. So you guys use me as your example. Um, if you haven't gotten your testosterone levels checked, check it out. And again, I want to say thank you to buy over store in Newtown, um, especially, uh, Jennifer for helping me record the joke or the, uh, the skit at the beginning of the video. Hopefully you guys found that funny. If you guys got something out of this, please like the video, please subscribe. I could really use the support. I'm trying to grow to a thousand subscribers by July one. Um, that's my goal guys. I'm busting my butt. I've got business cards made. I'm walking around, I'm handing them out. I'm getting subscribers as fast as possible, but please support me. Um, so look, I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'll cut me videos. I'm going to have uh, I'm actually starting the Larry wheels six week challenge. So I'll be kind of putting those videos out pretty soon. And uh, again, weekly updates coming and some other fun videos. I've got some car content coming this summer. So guys, please like, please subscribe. And remember, get to the gym, take care of yourselves, and freaking live your dream. I'll catch you guys next time.